there were a lot of elders who had actually paved the way for me before me. Um, my, my, one of my mother's mother, Scari, uh, another elder, uh, Elder Kofani, another mother, uh, Viola Vaughn, um, uh, another elder, um, uh, Mahi. So they kind of really kind of set the pace and set the tone. And in Mississippi, we were already doing certain types of works in sustainability, mm -hmm. and we wanted to bring that over into Senegal. And uh, there were some family ties uh, that um, my uncles and people before me had already established. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, primarily reestablishing those ties and building upon it. So it, 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 I'm a lot more advanced simply because I'm standing on their shoulders right. uh, in reality. And I try to make sure that's clear uh, because uh, there's a lot that's going on in Senegal. Uh, there's a small pieces of property still here in Mississippi that we're working, mm -hmm. as well as some property uh, uh, in Mexico that they've located that actually uh, by some of this year I'll be uh, going to verify and make sure it's a good piece of property. Um, and then also in Gambia. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so in Mississippi, you said it's still going. What part of Mississippi? Uh, we have property in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, and in Marion County, Mississippi, with an area called Rose Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, five acres in one and 15 acres in the other. Okay. And so they're primarily uh, farm, uh, community farm properties, uh, where we work on uh, um, all of your local crops, canning, preserving, uh, making herbals and medicines from them. Mm -hmm. uh, we begin in the process of making uh, biofuels as well as ethanol mm -hmm. and biodiesel. Uh, as well as we just bought like uh, three, um, let's see, th seven, seven times three, three 2100 watt solar power systems. Wonderful. And so I'll be setting each one of those up as well uh, within the next six months. So we already have them in storage. We bought them. We bought them, as a matter of fact, I tell people we got them on a, a lot of those Black Thursday, I mean, Black Friday right. specials. We were able to get it dirt cheap. Uh, and so that's kind of how we picked those well, up. Sometimes those Black Fridays work for us, huh? Sometimes. <laughs> if, it's, if it's for the point of empowering our community and mm -hmm. self-sustainability uh, self right. and self-sufficiency, absolutely. We saved a lot of money and still got the warranties and what have you with them. Wonderful. So from that perspective, yeah, but just to consume on it, no, nah, I'm not interested in oh, that. Oh, okay. Because right. you, be, you can't sustain anything just being a consumer. That's so, exactly yes, right. Yes, well, we'll make sure that's clear. The project total amount of time has been going on about 25 years now. Mm. Uh, the first area that was created was, co was called Cozy Atlanta. Um, and that was about a 45 acre location there. Uh, we had to move from that location because if you know a little bit about Senegal, it's outside of an area called Kaolak and it used to be an inland saltwater sea there. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues that took place is we drilled certain wells down, and we after we got there, we were getting good water, but over time the salt still started coming back, taking over the wells. Mm -hmm. So we ended up moving from the cozy Atlanta or the uh, from um, uh, outside of Cowlack area to uh, an area called Ketagu, uh out near an, um, an area called Tambacunda or Segu in Senegal. Mm. And it's way out in the woods. It's right near the mountain range right there near Mali, where Mali and Senegal meet. And it's about 1,500 acres there. Wow. Um, water towers, water wells, uh, solar power, uh, all foods are grown on the land. Everything is, is self-sufficient 150%. Yes, uh, there are family members still there. There is uh, Mother members? Viola, yes. Okay. Mother Viola, she's still there. Uh, uh, Elder Kelfani, he's still there. Uh, Father Kelfani. Um, the workhorses are Kwame and uh, Rashid. So they're the, you know, they're the major workhorses. They're the young men that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, my job is I'll be bringing resources and things back back and forth, and because the property is so far away, once you land into Dakar, Senegal, which is the capital, uh -huh. it's like a 13 hour drive to get to the location. Mm -hmm. So we have two small uh, properties um, right outside of Dakar that we have people stay at, and they're beachfront properties. And so uh, generally people stay there, and that's our first location that you come to, mm -hmm. get to detox, enjoy the area, and then you come on out into the uh, area there. But 
uh, and the acres, the self-sustainable property is right next to uh, the National Park Reserve that they oh, have out there. So okay. it's a beautiful piece of property. Okay. Uh, the water, I've never tasted any water that good, that, really? that clean, that fresh before. It's, 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 when they say living water, that, that place has living water. Wow, I look forward to getting there one day. <laughs> Absolutely. You're more than welcome. Anyone is welcome. But, uh, that's the whole point of the house uh -huh. that's there in an area called Embor, Senegal. Uh -huh. So when you come to Dakar, you land in Dakar, Embor is about an hour and 20 minute drive away. Mm -hmm. The home is there. It's a six bedroom, six and a half bath. Uh, wait, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six bed. No, seven bedrooms, six and a half bath. And you, uh, it's more than enough room for anyone who comes. There's mm -hmm. a, we have a vehicle there, a translator, driver, wow. cook. You, 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 all you have to do is get there. Wow. And so I'll be there next month. Okay. Uh, again, I go back and forth. Uh, also, Elder Kelfani, and you notice I, I list a lot of the elders' names first. Yes. Because if ever there's a time that, you know, that it's listened to, it, it's not looked as if it's just me pushing this, because they are uh, beyond instrumental. Uh, mm -hmm. They're so busy doing, they don't even get the chance to really stop and talk that much. Mm -hmm. uh, but Elder Kelfani uh, uh, purchased three uh, locations where we're going to be putting uh, electronic a cell phone and other electronics that we're going to sell. Mm -hmm. American electronics that we have here sell at an extreme premium. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, just accessories, Bluetooth, earpieces, uh, face covers, the phones themselves. So there's going to be one location in Dakar and two in, uh, in Boer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, well, really, in Boer is like the state inside that state of a couple of cities and we'll have two in that state and one in the main city of Dakar. Okay. And uh, that's going to help with income consistently coming in. Mm -hmm. So between the solar, we have our own solar power, foods that we're going and what have you. Mm -hmm. Now we begin to branching into how to create business in the area. Mm -hmm. So since electronics don't really have like a shelf life, if mm -hmm. we buy a, 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 um, a cell phone or an accessory and we put that on there uh, on the shelf, mm -hmm. you know, once someone, you know, it doesn't expire it doesn't have a spoil date per se mm -hmm. and then they can buy it and it's generally hard to, uh, our, our electronics are uh, again go at a premium so, so we d really do well with that mm -hmm. uh, again elders before me and again i'm standing on their shoulders uh had already established certain relationships with some of the different spiritual and physical elders in the community. And so uh, because of those elders and those, those spiritual communities that, that, that were there, we were able to create certain things and, and, and be able to um, um, have a way to get property, meet with uh, different people in, uh, in the villages, connect with the elders there. And so some areas... Um, one of the things I like about Senegal, let, let, me, let me be a little bit clear. One of the things I like about Senegal is you can own property and you can own it by deed still. You can get that property deeded to you. You can get the deed insured uh, through different uh, insuring pro pro processes and you can get property that way. You also still have the ancient system way where there are elders who have large tracts of land, community elders, and you can get land that way and then they will give it to you and or your family, and your family takes care of the property that way. So we have both types that's going on. In the, in the, in the city areas, the more uh, uh, city areas, we have deeded property. Out in the rural areas, we have rural property that was granted to, to us for us to do whatever our families need to do. Mm -hmm. So those are the two, two ways there. Getting with some of the elders like uh, 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 Elder Sheikh Mahi, uh, 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 Pop Conti, these were elders that are from Senegal that mm -hmm. had already made connections with uh, family, our families here. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of guided us through making the connections with different people. And, you know, you're in the community, you bring certain things to the community, and then they, they bring certain things to you. And so now what has basically happened, we're a fixture in the community. Uh, Mother Viola uh, has done like an outstanding job, again, standing on her, her shoulders as well. Uh, I think we're at the 15th school. In Senegal now. You have 15 schools 15, there? yes. And so... She's uh, developed 15 different schools? Yes. How many children in mm -hmm. each school? 
This the, is the, probably taking some time. Yes, yeah. this is. Yeah, this goes back, like I said, about 25 years okay. now, 25, 30 years. Uh, so uh, you can always uh, look up. It's, it's the uh, 10,000 Girls Program. Okay. And we're starting now the Boys Program. Okay. And so uh, it's a different area where the, the people were being underserved. Mm -hmm. uh, we train the community how for, how the community can make sure they get it. We get books and things that come in. Make sure the curriculum is more African-centered. Wonderful. Uh, because unfortunately, when you come into Senegal, one of the major languages is French. Mm -hmm. And often because they're not publishing companies in Senegal, the books are being sent from France, mm -hmm. which has primarily the Eurocentric ideology. Of course. And so we've been able to give more of an Afrocentric uh, 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 printing presses to give more of our stories or make sure that is in the syllabus. And so, uh, yeah, so the, that program has got, like I said, about 15 schools now. So how many yeah. children are in each school? Generally, on average, about 100 to, you know, 150. So that. where do you get your teachers from, from the people there? Generally, we're getting the pe uh, teachers from Senegal. Uh -huh. some, um, some, we do sometimes get uh, uh, teachers that come from different international programs uh -huh. who will come to train the local teachers. Okay. Uh, but because it's fully self-sufficient, uh -huh. uh, what I mean by that is the community becomes involved. Uh -huh. uh, Mother Viola and, and some of us uh, will go and sit down with the community. Okay. Or the community will have actually called us and said, I heard that you did a school in this community. We would like for you to come do that in our community. Okay. So we meet with the elders of the community and the families who are interested. Mm -hmm. So they become vested in it. Mm -hmm. And then they, we decide where the site is going to be. Okay. And from where the site is going to be, then is decided who's going to do the work and how is the work going to get done in the square footage of it. Okay. After the community has decided that, then we get with the political and spiritual heads, mm -hmm. which often are people who really were already in the community. Right, right. But if they're not, then we'll go to them next. Okay. Here's what the community wants to do. This is how we're going to make it work. This is how it's going to be self-sufficient. This is how we're going to get the books. Some countries and some organizations donate the books. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, it's donated, uh, but sometimes we do have to purchase them. Uh, generally, there's farm or gardens located around the school. Okay. okay. So they grow their own foods. Uh, uh, the, the mothers, different mothers in the community are, are become the cooks okay. for the food, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it's completely self-sufficient mm -hmm. because the community says what they're going to do, and the community says how they're going to support it. The community states what is going to be the tuition per month, who is going to collect it, when they're going to bring it in, um, it, it, it's completely from beginning to end a, co a community effort. And that makes a difference because we've seen um, UNICEF and other organizations come in and do schools much larger than ours. Mm -hmm. I mean, 500, 1,000, 1,500, you know, student capacity. And then the minute the money dries up from the foreign, foreign aid, mm -hmm. the school closes down. Mm -hmm. And generally, you, you know, the, the, it either goes into disrepair or they have to tear it down or, you, you know, recycle it or what have you. And you can't even tell a school used to be there. And the reason is because it came from a more an idea of, okay, someone outside is funding it. Mm -hmm. And so the community never felt vested in it. Right. But once the community became vested in it, they're already, it's always, they're, they're like, okay, what do we need to keep this going? Because right. where's the budget at? What's this? Okay, we got some more students coming. We need another uh, uh, classroom to be built or uh, uh, extend the building or whatever the case may be. So it's a great program. So what is the name of the uh, community, the sustainable community that you built that's there? For the schools, it's called the 10,000 Girls Program. And for the overall communities, right. uh, there's, it's called One Family International. One Family International. Yes, okay. and they, they, the, the motto is we're building our countries, our communities, one family at a time. Okay. And so that's that's the name of it. We are, we are on Facebook as One Family International. Okay. Um, um, you can get us uh, on Facebook, tweet, Skype, all, uh, all of that. You just look up One Family International. We'll generally have a Senegal with it. And you'll be able to pull us up and, and, and connect with us, follow us with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, right now, uh, the next thing is going into Gambia uh, is where we're going into next. And Gambia is a country right inside, basically. Yeah, I, I know, and the, there is a sustainable community already in Gambia. That's my understanding. I, I think I met one of the uh, brothers who has it, and we're hoping to, to, to work with them. Right. Um, our first step that we're trying to do right now, there is a brother who, um, you know, one of the issues why we never really stepped into Gambia that well was because of the 
um, governing, governing parties that were in place at the time had been in place for 22 years. Mm -hmm. And the issue was when there wasn't a turnover of the political power that well, mm -hmm. the, the concern was when it finally does happen, what type of vacuum would be there? Okay. Well, uh, thank goodness and in true African form, there was a turnover of power here recently. Mm -hmm. There was no issue. There were no bloodshed or anything right, of that right, nature. Right, right. And so now there's a new political uh, power there. Mm -hmm. the, the communities are excited and everyone is you know, revitalize. So now the possibility of coming into Gambia has, has opened up for us, okay. as well as a property that has a, is a little bit more than an acre, uh, but that would be a great property for us. There's a guy who owns it who lives here in America, mm -hmm. and it's asked us if we look at it and we want to finish it and take it over. So mm -hmm. we'll be looking at that property when I go this right. next I'm month. I'm certainly going to share the information about the sustainable communities in Gambia. We right always now. want to work together. It, it, yeah. it, we can do more right. and do uh, greater things and, and be longer lasting and more sustainable together. So it, it love to. Mm -hmm. They love it. Okay. Once again, Senegal is, is uh, one of your most stable uh, countries as far as governance in the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even know where it is unless they're really knowledgeable about the continent. The general, you know, because they'll say, okay, because they haven't heard it on the news here. And that's because of that stability. Mm -hmm. So they're extremely open to it. And Senegal has what I call a dual forms of governance. Mm -hmm. They have the political system, mm -hmm. but equally and just as strong as the spiritual, elder, and community system that mm -hmm. they have. So if you get in line with this, the community spiritual elder system, mm -hmm. it actually will push the political system that you see. Okay, okay. And uh, the political system actually acknowledges that system. So that's how in Senegal it's much easier for us to operate mm -hmm. because it's community that's saying get this done. Mm -hmm. And then it stops what a lot of times different organizations did with, when they come into uh, uh, countries within the continent of Africa is that the political system, the people in political power, they're generally wanting something for what you're doing. They want a piece of it, a right, percentage of right, it, because right. generally they're not making that much money right. with whatever job they have. And they're like, oh, you this big program, you're about to come in with, you know, half a million, million dollars worth of aid, you know, I'll make sure you're okay, but you need to give me a percentage. Well, the reason that doesn't happen to us is because the communities uh, are calling us. Okay. The communities are sustaining it. Okay. So uh, if, if, if all of the mothers and the fathers of a community got 50 children and all of them saying we're going to give $10 or $20 a month to this school mm -hmm. and whatever we put in to help build the school, mm -hmm. the school repays for those building supplies and what have you, mm -hmm. that's their school. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, our, it's not our school as far as the organization. Mm -hmm. It's literally the community school. Right. So it's really hard to come in and say, oh, you know, you guys are making money from this or this or whatever the case. Also, the, the, the young women and young men learn how to do different crafts. The young men learn how to make different herbals and things from the farm. The, the young women make different crafts, and we actually sell them in some places here. They make bags. They make coats. I wish I'd have had my coat on today, but there is a lot of different crafts. And so then they sell that to the U.S. and Europe, and once again, that's a way. Mm -hmm. And so what happens when they sell it, if they sell, when, when they sell whatever item it is, if it's sold here in the U.S. or Europe, 50% of the profit goes to that child and their family mm -hmm. directly. Mm -hmm. The other 50% goes into the community pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so if, 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 and if someone in a political position is looking at what money is coming in, they have the whole community to deal with to try to get at that versus let's come to these people who are, they're black folk, but they're from the U.S. Let's try to work them for them. It, it, it doesn't oh, work. Is, it's the community that, 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 that controls it. Well, that's good. Generally, uh, we've done a couple of dual citizenships. So, you know, if you're married, generally you, you can get right. naturalized that way. There are some other options that we're looking at. And Gambia is much easier on its dual citizenship procedure because Gambia is an English-speaking country. Okay. Where Senegal is a francophone, there's a little bit of a difference. There's French-speaking as a, as a colonial language that's there. You do have your Wolof and your Serer and your other uh, original languages there. Uh, but uh, so they are open to dual citizenship in both of those countries. There's no issue. Okay. There are people who do have dual citizenship, okay. uh, and there's no problem with it. 
Absolutely. The property that you can have by deed, mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, the property you get by what they call Communitat de Royal, uh, Rural, which means rural community. Because mm -hmm. when it's way out in the, in, the, in the country area, it's strictly the spiritual community systems that mm -hmm. control it. That property is deeded to a whole family. Okay. The whole family has that property. Okay. Um, and so, yes, they will maintain that property. Okay. Um, uh, outside of those areas, they have other properties like in the uh, areas near the beach and near the cities that's mm -hmm. literally subdivided like what we're used to here. Right. And yes, you receive the deed to the property right. and then you transfer it to y your children. Okay. So for instance, uh, their properties, we have, uh, we, we operate a, 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 comp a, a, a type of limited liability company and a trust there. Okay. And, those, and the trust is making sure it maintains property for all of the people who have uh, migrated back from the U.S. to Africa to make sure their children mm -hmm. are covered if something was happening okay. and that person transitions, okay. the community will hold the property and trust and make sure the child gets Wonderful. that property or the family. Well, the work you're doing is just... Um I can't, I don't know the words for it, you know. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job there. And so we look forward for folks to be able to come and visit mm -hmm. and, uh, and possibly purchase land there and bring their families there. What we really need is we need more hands. If okay. there's anything that we need, we need more hands, more people who want to participate. Okay. Even if it's just come and volunteer for a little while. Okay. Be able to detox. We have very, we have sabbatical uh, areas to take certain baptismal, certain uh, uh, gussels, uh to cleanse your body and what happens have you mm -hmm. uh to get away if you take you if you get your flight there and come there uh we already have housing for you mm -hmm. you fool only thing you have to cover is maybe the utilities that you use which might be you know over a one week period a hundred dollars okay oh, so wow. it, the, the, it's out there for everyone and if they want any information again they can reach us by one family international at facebook or they can uh contact uh me directly um, my e email address is states, S-T-A-T-E-S, trustee at gmail.com. That's good, states, trustee at gmail.com.